Hi, everyone. Welcome to this weekly webinar series of Effectory. And my name is Arjen Swank. I'm your host and moderator for this next 30 minutes in which we'll answer your most burning questions on the lessons to learn during um, this corona crisis and how to deal with that as a manager working with your team or how to deal with that as an employee or as a um, company uh, board of directors. Corona has an impact on all of us worldwide, the way that we work, the way that we stay at home, the way that we work from home. And this week we have in the studio here Guido Heze on appropriate distance, I have to say. Um, he is the founder of a factory uh, specialist in engagement and feedback solutions, and he's also an HR trend watcher. And he's famous, well, throughout the world for his knowledge on how people deal with organizations, but also how organizations deal with their people. Two practical things. We'll record this webinar so you can check it back. You can see the recording in the mail that we send you after this webinar. And you can ask all of your questions live to Guido, and I'll moderate to make sure that we answer the majority of your questions. I've received already a few uh, before this webinar, so I'm happy to um, answer those during the session itself. So, Guido, I want to take it over to you. Um, I'm very happy that you're here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here too. You're an HR trend watcher. W what have you seen happening during the uh, last weeks during this crisis? Yeah, thank you first for the, for the title. Uh, I've seen a lot of different things. I was uh, on, on skiing holiday with friends, uh, also entrepreneurs, uh, and I saw lots of different reactions from, from them. Uh, uh, after that, when I came back, I spoke to a lot of uh, employees of different organizations. I also he heard a lot of different reactions. So uh, I thought, uh, and it was sort of a, a advice for, for one friend of, uh, friend of my, my who uh, was struggling with how to deal with the coronavirus to write it down and I thought well let's make it a blog and it was picked up uh, quite uh, quite well from cool. that, that part. So I saw different reactions. Cool, well I think it's definitely good uh, it was an inspiration to launch this webinar. Um, I'm not going to hold you any longer you've got a presentation ready P please share with us what are those lessons for managers during crisis from your experience. Okay thank you very much. Uh, please ask uh, all questions uh, because I want to keep it short, the presentation, so that there's enough time for uh, questions to be answered uh, afterwards. Um, what I see is a lot of different reactions, what I already said. Uh, I saw uh, uh, people panicking directly. Oh, what's going on with my business? What does it mean for me? And what does it mean for the business? And I also s saw people who stayed uh, calm. Uh, what I also saw is uh, was people uh, who directly started to act and also uh, people who were very passive and did nothing and the, 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 the trick during times of crisis is to uh, act and to stay calm and that's a rare combination and it's quite a difficult combination but that's the best reaction on a crisis like, like this to remain calm and act uh, and that means that you show leadership and you also s see in such a mat matrix you have three other uh, uh, points. Uh, people creating panic by panicking and acting in, at, in, the, in the same time to make ad hoc decisions. Uh, I also saw people freezing, uh, panicking but doing nothing, just in a sort of freeze situation. Uh, and uh, people that were invisible, that stay, remain calm and were, not, were very passive. Uh, and those three... Uh, uh, roles are not the best role to, to play during uh, crisis time. So there's uh, nine lessons uh, we can learn from former crisis, uh, what's worked well and how to get as good uh, as possible out of the crisis. Uh, the first one is to act. Uh, in this time, leadership is expected. A lot of people look uh, at, the, at, the, at their boss also when they ha have very autonomous roles and, uh, uh, and the organization is kind of self-steering, uh, then even then people look at the boss, what's going on, what's happening, uh, how do we react as an organization on this. So it's time to lead. Uh, and it's very important to have a sort of a mixture between uh, carefulness uh, of decisions and speed of decisions. And normally uh, you make uh, very careful decisions quite uh, fast. 
because you have all the information in place. And the, the tricky thing with this crisis is that there's a lot of information lacking because you don't know how long it's going to take, uh, what decisions the government will make, how your people will react, uh, how this new situation will work out for your organization. And even then you have to make decisions. And if you have to choose between carefulness or speed, then uh, um, speed is, is absolutely necessary, as careful as possible. But show leadership and act. The second one is to stay calm. There's a lot of uncertainty in this situation. Nobody knows how long it's going to take, uh, uh, what decisions will be made by the government, and therefore it's important to prepare different scenarios. So to have a sort of time out for yourself and uh, sit and think what's going on, what's going to happen, how long does it going to take, and what if it takes a month longer, what if it takes a half a year longer, what if this happens every year again, uh, uh, such, a, such a crisis, and to prepare scenarios for that. What does it mean for the organization? What decisions do I need to take in these cases? And what I want to say is that fear is a bad advisor in this situation. Uh, because what I've seen in previous uh, crisis is that uh, uh, ad hoc decisions taken uh, while being fearful uh, it costs you a lot of time to recover from that, especially when it uh, involves people. If you take ad hoc decisions regarding a lot of people, then it takes uh, maybe years to get back the trust of your employees again. So please stay calm, time out, prepare different scenarios and, uh, and don't act from fear and don't act too ad hoc. The third one is to place yourself in your employee's shoes. So to, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of uh, 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 decisions made also by state agencies and a lot of people are concerned. Uh, they are concerned about their own health. They are concerned of the health of their loved ones. And it's important that you, that you see that and that you recognize that. Uh, a lot of people also have uh, questions about operational matters. Uh, how do I work from home? How does it work? And how do I do that when my housing is very uh, small uh, and I have children walking around? How do I uh, organize the care for children, homeschooling? Uh, and also have uh, questions about their job. Is my job at stake? Uh, how long does it going to take? What decisions will be made? And a lot of concern by, by employees. So it's very important that you make it clear that you are aware of their concerns. So also in your communication towards employees, if you start from the, from the point of view of the organization without taking care of the, 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 the feelings and thoughts of the people, you will, you, will, you will miss something. So please start with the concerns or uh, place yourself in, the, in your employee's shoes and start, start with their concerns and then start what is happening for your organization and what decisions you will make. Very important uh, uh, in, in, in this matter is also to communicate in the most honest way. Uh, corona will uh, have an influence on your organization. And I think in most cases the effect is negative. And everyone, every one of your organization knows it. If they are taking care of customers, they see less customers or they see less activity or uh, uh, they, they see uh, that people buy less, for example. It's everyone sees what's going on, especially the people that are in the front line. Uh, so please be honest about the impact and don't hide information for people. Say it outright. Uh, face the brutal facts and, 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 and show that uh, what's happening to your employees as well. And also tell the scenarios you have been thinking about. And that's uh, very important and very difficult to do that without creating panic in the organization. So uh, show that you are the leader of the organization. You know what's going on. You know the scenarios. You've thought about it. Uh, you see what's happening. You face the brutal facts and you tell it to the employees. You can share this month or the coming two or three months will be 30% less turnover for our organization, uh, but communicate it honestly because people know it. Uh, 
be clear, provide clarity. Uh, it's, 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 it's human to be concerned and uh, people are concerned and especially people with probationary, uh, in the probationary period or with temporary contracts, they are concerned what's happening with my job, etc. And what you don't want to do is that those people are freezing and doing nothing because they're just waiting for the verdict uh, of you as, as, as a leader of the organization. And also have guidelines uh, how you react. Do you judge people on added value or just by their tenure? Uh, what's what's the, the, the way that you that you act and also provide clarity what can be done for the organization uh, as a leader it's now important especially if you work for example with teams that you make clear wh where every team stands for and what is expected of every team so uh, that the, the whole organization as a whole uh, works works best and there are different stages in which an organization can operate uh, in, in the first stage it was chaos, then reorganizing, and now the stage can be to, to, to get best out of this uh, crisis. Uh, but see in what stage you, you are, provide clarity what is expected of the, of the people. Uh, then, um, uh, the, the, it's very important to share why you take the decisions you take. Uh, share the rationale between the uh, uh, decisions. And the best thing to, to say, but also the best way to, to act regarding uh, decisions, is that you make decisions that are best in the long-term interest of the organizations. And that you, that you say, okay, we need to make some short-term decisions, uh, maybe some hard short-term decisions, but we have to act what's best in the long-term interest of the organizations. And clearly state, together with those decisions, what the principles are uh, of those decisions. Uh, how you think, what was uh, uh, the rationale behind the decision. And for a lot of people, it's uh, some terminology is not, not clear. So they don't know exactly what is meant with uh, turnover, costs, with profit, with cash flow. And it's necessary to explain those uh, those terms to the to the employee and to explain step by step how corona or how this crisis uh, affects your organization so do it childish, childishly uh, uh, easy in a in a, in a very um, and and explain the terminology um, then it's important to communicate frequently there's a high need for information in this case especially when people are working abroad and they don't see each other, uh, give frequent updates about what's going on in your organization. And um, what you see is if there is a communication breakdown, if you don't communicate, gossip will take over. and People will interact with each other what's going on and then you get rumors and that's not good for your organization. So please be clear, uh, 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 be decisive, uh, uh, communicate and communicate very frequently. And the best thing is to, to communicate uh, in a sort of interactive form with your employees. So actively encourage your employees to ask any questions uh, in the form, for example, of uh, a sort of uh, webinar like this, that you communicate, that people can ask questions to a mail address or to whatever, and that you directly answer those questions so that rumors, uh, that there's no room for gossip or rumors. And then uh, what's also important is to pay some extra attention uh, um, to your managers because your managers have a sort of double role. It's very hard for them to lead their department uh, in times of corona because they have a double role. They are employee of the organization. They don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, they don't know what it means for, for them. They don't know what it means for their family, for uh, homeschooling, etc. What, uh, so the, the personal stuff is is uh, is on top of mind for them, uh, but also they have to uh, engage the employees in their department. So it's 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 a hard time for them, and please provide freedom for them to make uh, uh, decisions, to make uh, 
give them some room for, 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 for decision making on their team, especially uh, when it concerns people, how to take care of people that are ill or uh, that are, uh, have children uh, who don't have uh, childcare, etc. So give them some, some room and please give guidelines, give freedom, give responsibility and give some guidelines for the managers, but also beware of their important role and beware of their uh, uh, difficult role at this, at this time. And the last one is uh, please know that your reaction matters. Uh, and the saying is a friend in need is a friend indeed. Uh, and that's what also uh, occurs during this crisis. Everyone will remember this crisis in five years, in 10 years, after 15 years, they still remember this crisis. And they also still remember how you uh, acted uh, upon this crisis, what your reaction was. And uh, your organization reveals its true nature uh, by, uh, by the way it acts during this crisis. So uh, is the organization only uh, looking for profit or is it also uh, concerned about uh, the health of their employees? Everybody will remember how you act today. So uh, it's important to, to be realistic and to make an, build an organization, to rebuild the organization in this corona crisis, that after the crisis uh, you, can, uh, you can fly away and it will, it will go good with your organization. And uh, you, you need your, your people with that. Uh, so it's very important to involve your employees to listen to their feedback, to listen to their questions, to listen to their concerns, and to keep in touch with your employees. And that was what I wanted to share, Ian. Great, thank you very much. Maybe as a final summary, it's, it's good to see them, uh, to see that back and, and yeah, to see what, what were, so out of these nine, I mean, yeah. nine is a lot. Yeah. If you could only pick one, Please don't forget this one. Uh, I think I think the last one. I think it's very uh, good to be completely aware that people will remember this crisis for years and also will remember your true nature. And now it's time to 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 show who you are and what kind of organization you are. And uh, and the combination of the rest is important to have leadership and the, the good decisions and and good guidelines and to share it, but especially what's the, what's the real, uh, what, matters, what matters most for your organization. Yeah, and it's good to, sh to show that there are different interests, that, that, that there is the personal interest of employees, that there's an organizational interest and that you have to do something for society and that you show the combination of those interests and the interaction between it, but not only go for uh, ad hoc survival, uh, profitability decisions yeah great great thanks so please be aware everyone uh, you can still ask your questions live we're getting a lot of responses i'm just going to read out a few to you guido and okay. i'm asking you for a response yeah um if you haven't done already or if you've already submitted you can still do that so please please do share um this one is is uh fun from eric he's asking us how do you keep people inspired when they are at home um yeah, uh, in the beginning, there, uh, now we are, uh, I think, uh, uh, in, a, in the next stage. But in the beginning, there was completely uh, uh, chaos. Uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, all what I said is important to, to, to communicate, to co communicate often, but also show that, that, you, that you are aware of the situation in, where, in which people are working. Uh, what I liked, for example, for in, in, in our case as a factory is that the, 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 some people uh, organized uh, Friday afternoon drinks uh, online uh, and it was really fun uh, but to communicate with each other in a sort of uh, easy, easy way, not in a formal way. Uh, but it's especially important to stay in contact uh, and, to, and to show that the employees matter but also give some clarity what is expected from the team and therefore from the employee. Great, thank, thank you. Um, now this is interesting, you, you're talking about guidelines, uh, help managers uh, support your leadership. 
Um, the question from Andrew is, how do you balance giving managers room, on the one hand, but also um, versus them running off in the wrong direction? You can give some guidelines, but managers won't all interpret them in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, and that's sometimes difficult because you don't exactly know where it's going. Uh, but the, the, the answer is, is to have the, the, the boundaries in place. Uh, you, you, it's very good when you give your uh, managers a bit more room to interact with their employees, but it's also very good to give boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done and what is uh, behind, behind the boundary, so what cannot be done. So you have to give clarity and freedom at the same time, to give freedom and responsibility at the same time. And the, the, it will show the, the also the good managers that take care of both uh, legs, uh, freedom and responsibility. Uh, but you, it's important to know what's going on and to, to get feedback from the employees and the managers as well on what's going on in the organization. So, so do you mean that you need to have confidence or trust in your people that they will act not only as a person, but yep. also in the best interest of the company? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's important to show leadership, but it's very important not to micromanage and to, and to show distrust to your employees. So it's important to show leadership about the, the boundaries, the guidelines, the, uh, how it's going on with your organization, and leave room for employees and for especially for managers to, to act in their new situation and to, to, to know what's going on in the, in the homes. What I, what I like, I had some, some conference calls uh, uh, this week, and sometimes you see, for example, a child running through the, through the screen or uh, knocking at the door, and you know it, 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 it's, a pers it's not a functionary, but it's a person with a personal life uh, doing his best uh, in, the, in the new situation. And if you have eye for that and you uh, respect that, uh, then you get a lot of engagement back from your from your employees. And I, I think, I mean, high engagement brings ambassadors. Your employees are your best ambassadors for your organization. Absolutely. Also in terms of when they when they work from home. Yeah. How do you do that when you have to lay off people? So I mean, some companies will not make it with the with how they started this crisis. Yeah. How can you do that in a good way? Yeah, that's 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 a difficult one. Uh, um, different. Governments have different rulings uh, how to cope with employees in, during this uh, situation. And some uh, governments say, for example, if you lay off uh, people, you don't get the financial help uh, that we can uh, provide you. So uh, also as a sort of protection for employees to stay, uh, stay in business. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to lay off people or if that's one of the scenar scenarios, then I think it's important that you do your utmost best to, uh, to, 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 to take quality into account and not only lay off people who just started or uh, that are easy to get rid of, mm -hmm. but to, to, to keep the best uh, possible people in your organization. And that is if you do that with respect and if you do that with conscience and if you do that carefully, people will respect that and they will see that and they will also feel a winning team uh, when they stay at the organization mm -hmm. because they know that you, you've done it uh, strongly, firmly maybe, but also very carefully. And then it's, then it's respected. But if you make ad hoc decisions and just lay off a lot of people from uh, without any respect of personal situations, then, uh, then they will remember that for years. So actually, if, if I understand you well, it's not only about the people leaving, it's also about the people that stay behind. Absolutely. Because, yeah, how yeah. they also have to stay engaged. Yeah, so you have to take care of the, 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 the personal element, but you also have to take care of the organizational element. And, uh, and absolutely, the, the, the organizational element is the people that, that stay. And they Correct. need to feel confidence and trust uh, that you made uh, the most healthy decision uh, for the long term of the organization. Good. Um, interesting question from Eve. He's asking, interestingly, most of the situ uh, interestingly, most of the suggestions do apply also outside crisis situations. For instance, communicate clarity, rationale behind decisions, 
your behavior will stick, name it. How can we expect managers to do it in crisis time while they don't do it, sometimes enough, in normal times? That's a good question. <laughs> and uh, I think there's a lot of truth uh, uh, behind it. May maybe expect, uh, except from the firmness of, of leadership and the uh, scenarios, etc., uh, and, uh, and, and, and to make decisions in a, in a fast way. Uh, but uh, a lot of those suggestions are suggestions that are also good uh, uh, not in crisis times. But what you see is um, a lot of emotional, personal, ad hoc reactions during crisis time. And therefore, it's uh, exceptionally uh, uh, needed to, to stress uh, these nine uh, lessons from, from, from previous crises. Uh, and to, to yeah to ask how to yeah and, and if 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 people are not able to handle this uh, yeah then then there's a, then you are in uh, in trouble yeah <laughs> and d d but d yeah on the other hand a crisis like this there will be a shake out of, of of organizations that are not well organized or with very weak leadership it it will happen. And what I hope is that the crisis wakes up uh, the board of management, the, bo uh, the directors and the, and, the, and, the, and the local management to do it in a different way mm -hmm. and to act firmly upon this crisis. And if they are not able to do it, yeah, that's, that's not so good news for the, for the organization. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. Yeah. Uh, so we have a few people, uh, of course, I mean, b b being an international audience, uh, we have a great question actually from Nassim. He says, I'm working for an 80,000 people multinational in 60 countries. We cannot get in touch in person with every individual employee, but it touches us all. How do we get in touch maybe frequently to, yeah, how do we get in touch with these people? How do we pick up their needs? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it still is possible, but sometimes you have to address uh, things if you work in 80 countries. Uh, I, I can imagine that you have uh, uh, 80 uh, sort of country managers and uh, please uh, set them in, in the place of, uh, uh, of the leader of such a country. So you can work with local leaders if you cannot oversee the organization because the organization is too, uh, too, too, uh, in too many countries or uh, too diverse or too big. Uh, uh, even if it's big, then sometimes it's good. Uh, uh, we also uh, work with organizations of 180,000 people uh, that that listen to the to the guidelines and to the personal message of the the leader of the total organization. But you can also uh, appoint uh, local leaders that do the same job for a smaller uh, number of uh, employees, um, and that also can 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 make. Uh, boundaries and and, uh, and decisions on on, on that, okay. but it's it's hard for a, a diverse organization of eighty thousand people in different countries. Uh, it's more com more complicated, but it's still doable if you appoint the right people. Good, uh, Nicolene is actually. I think this is in line with with what you're saying. Nicolene is asking about a specific initiative. I think she read about it somewhere on on LinkedIn or. Um, for the COVID pulse of a factory, if this could be a way to do it. Yeah, that's the, that's the solution we, we offer to, uh, to a lot of organizations. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the last week, I think 50 organizations used the COVID-19 uh, pulse survey to uh, get feedback and get information and get ideas from their, from their employees. Uh, and free of use in, in April, so that's, that's, that's the, the good news. Uh, that's a way to, to, to do it. Um, and that's especially a way to get feedback from the employees and to get ideas from the employees. It's not a way to communicate. So the communication uh, of where you stand for and, 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 and to, to show leadership, that needs to be done by the, by the leader. Mm -hmm. But to get information, get feedback and get information about what's needed, then the COVID pulse, do it every weekly, is very good information to, uh, to, to make new decisions and to make new policy. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Um, 
I'm just checking in on the final questions. I think because of time, we have to round off. So I'm, I think I'm going to answer the last question of Maria. Um, her question is, what do you think? And Well, maybe it's good to illustrate. Uh, next week, we have uh, Tom Haak here. He is also an HR trend watcher, internationally famous. He's absolutely famous. We know him uh, very well from his predictions on the future of work. I'll, I'll surely come back to that. But maybe you can now predict in terms of what he, will, he might discuss next week as well. What do you think how this situation will impact the future? How we work, how we engage people, leadership, and listen to the voice of employees? Yeah, we, we, we're getting absolutely aware in this situation. Uh, board of directors get aware that an organization without people isn't an organization. And that you can, can have a, a fruitful organization if you don't have people and, uh, and, and engagement is absolutely necessary in these times because it's uh, if people work or don't work for your organization makes a very huge difference, uh, especially if it lasts for for multiple months. Yeah. Um, what 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 we can also learn from this crisis is that it, it, that it's more easy to interact without uh, sitting exactly next to each other. Uh, we are learning to uh, to have uh, uh, online discussions, online meetings, etc. So uh, maybe the number of flights and the number of uh, uh, personal appointments uh -huh. will will get a bit less uh, by this. Uh, Tom Haak is absolutely a, a, a tech freak uh, who who is uh, who is thinking about the f future impact uh, uh, of technology. So it's very good to listen uh, next week uh, to him. But I think it will absolutely influence uh, uh, how we deal with people and especially mm -hmm. that we see how important people are for the success of the organization and now every organization is rebuilding in order to take off directly if this crisis is uh, is over so uh, and there also will be shake out of organizations who don't gonna make it because they, uh, they don't take care of the people that's what happens wow Tough, interesting future words. I'm, I'm really impressed. Thank you very much, Guido, for your well, very straightforward way of illustrating this. And, and it Thank was a great pleasure here. to listen to you, but also to get inspired. As you said, next week, uh, same time, same stream, we'll have Tom Haak here. He's uh, uh, definitely one of the key influencers on the future of work and the key, um, well, let's say, predictions for the employee experience of the future. Um, will be available via email. So I'm just checking the technician if we can go back one slide to make sure that you can reach out to us as well. You mentioned the free COVID poll, so I'm happy to answer any questions that people might have for you for that as well. So if people reach out to me via email, I'll make sure that you get in touch. And also if you have any questions after this webinar that you want to address to Guido, please do reach out and I'm gonna make sure that you get your personal answers. Um, finally, you'll receive a link in your email with the recording so you can always look back at it and also check the valuable lessons that, that Guido has shared. So thank you very much, everyone, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you back next week. Thank you.